Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I will show you five things you should stop doing in Luminar Neo. After recording over 150 Luminar tutorials, I have compiled five photographers most common editing mistakes when using this application. This advice will improve and speed up your photo editing workflow to simplify your life in this software. Also, before we start, I want to mention that our new Luminar Neo Spring Bundle powers this video. This bundle offers over 900 brand new spring themed assets for your favorite Luminar Neo tools. To get it for the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video or find out more about it on our website cleverphotographer.com. The first mistake we're going to look at is involving RAW files. Let me show you what many photographers do. They select their RAW file and then move it into Edit module. Here they jump into the main toolbar and immediately start to use tools like Enhance AI, Structure AI and so on. Now when you do that, for example, we're going to use the Enhance AI and increase the Accent AI. You notice how we lost the Develop Raw tool and Noiseless Raw tool from our main toolbar. The reason being is that once you start to use the creative tools or the AI tools, the file will stop being raw file and it will become a TIFF file. So we will lose some of the information. Let me reset the file. We're going to go into the actions and revert to original. And now we get the raw tools back. And really what you want to do when you move your raw file into edit module is to develop it. You want to go into your develop raw tool and start by going into optics, make sure everything is checked here, then balance your sharpness and noise reduction. And then also make sure that you apply the right camera profile, play around with your highlights, shadows, black and whites, curves, and so on. Once you do that, once you get the most out of your file, then you can go ahead and start to use the other tools available in the application. So this is the only correct way of how you get the most out of your RAW file in Luminar Neo. So always bring your image into edit module, start with the basic development in the develop RAW tool or noiseless RAW tool. And after that, move on to the other tools like the enhance AI and the rest of them. The next common mistake is involving importing and exporting multiple images. Let me show you what I mean. We are here in a catalog module. We're going to click on add photos and then we select multiple photos. As you can see, we have a five sample files here. And once we're ready, we just click on add. They will be imported into Luminar Neo and we immediately move into the presets module or edit module where we're going to do our edit. For example, let's go into the presets and we can go into the purchase presets and use one of our new collections here. So for example, the spring portrait, the application takes a moment to load the previews and we can just select one of the looks we are looking for. For example, we're going to use the bright touch, maybe play around with the amount we want to apply. And once we are happy, all we want to do is to export the image. Now we just right click on the image and select export. 
After this, we select the location. So let's say we're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call it edited images and click on create. We could also adjust the exporting options. However, I'm quite happy with the JPEG. So I'm just gonna click on save. Now, once you do that, you will notice that rather than exporting one image, the application is actually exporting all five of them. And the reason is that when I import multiple images, in our case, five of them, they get loaded into application while being all selected. So look at the library here. You have the image we have just edited and you can see the white frame around the rest of the images. So this is important to remember. When you import multiple images, you just want to make sure that you select the one that you want to edit before exporting it. With mistake number three, we're going to be focusing on presets. This is also one of those mistakes that many of us will only make once. However, to avoid it completely, I want to show you how it's done. So we are here in Luminar Neo, we are in the edit module and looking at the image, first of all, I don't like the sky, it's a little bit boring. So we're gonna jump into the sky AI tool and just add a new sky. Once we are happy with the sky, we're gonna close this and then move into the enhance AI where we can change the light a little bit, use the accent AI and make it a little bit more interesting. After this, to finish it off, we can go into the landscape tool and just add a little bit of warmth with the golden hour slider. Once we're happy, we can close this and let's just go into the edit tab where you can see the three tools we have used so far. Now let's say that I get a little bit stuck. I don't know what else to do with the image. Here comes an idea. I could try one of the presets. So we go into the presets module and let's say that we're gonna use one of the presets from the Easy Landscapes collection. I will use the forest stream, I click on it, and as soon as I apply it, you can notice that the new sky disappeared. But that's not it. Now, when we go back into the edit module and here into the edits, you will see that our sky AI, our enhanced AI, and our landscape tool has disappeared. I know you see some of them here, however, they are coming from the preset. So what happened here? The thing is, when you apply a new preset to your image, it removes all the edits you have done to the image earlier. So the learning here is that if you want to use the presets, you have to start with them first. So you take your image, bring it into presets module, apply the preset, then you move it into edit module, adjust the preset, and then continue with any additional tools you want to apply to your photo. Talking about presets, and more importantly, the edit tab brings us nicely to the mistake number four. First of all, let's go into the edits tab. Just to repeat what we see here, starting from the bottom, going up, you see all the different tools we have used to edit this image. The advantage here is that you can open any of them and make further adjustments to the overall look. And then if you're happy, just continue with additional tools. This is why it's quite important to keep this as organized as possible. So you can come back and make any adjustments you want. Now here comes the mistake. Let's go back to the tools and let's say that we want to try some additional effects here. So let's say that I want to add additional structure. So we're going to open the structure AI, increase the amount and see what it does to the image. Looking at it, I don't actually like it. So I just reset the slider and close it and continue. After this, maybe I want to add some saturation so I can go into the color tool again, increase the saturation slider and see if that helps. In fact, again, I'm not really happy with it. So I can reset the tool again, close it and apply it. So if this didn't help, we can go all the way to the bottom and let's try the super contrast. With the super contrast, let's try to add contrast into the midtones, which actually looks very good. So I close it and continue. Now I can continue further with different edits. And if I want to go back, I would go back into the edit tab. And what we see here, 
that we not only see the super contrast tool we have used, however, we also see the color tool with the zero values on it, however, it's here. And we also see the structure AI. We haven't used it, however, it's here. So this is where you have to realize that anytime you open a new tool and you use the slider or button or any option that is there, it will be added into the edits tab regardless if you have used it at the end or not. So what are the options we have to avoid this? Well, first one, just take your time when you're doing your edit and make sure that you use only the tools you're going to need. But still, we don't want to stop you and test and try different things. So if you do that and your tool ends up in the list here, it's nothing easier than just opening it and then using the little bin icon in the top right corner of it, click on it and it disappears. This may be sound a little bit unnecessary, however, it's a great practice for you to be able to navigate through the edit and make any edits you need, or even further, if you wanna save this look and use it on a future images. And finally, it's time to look at the common mistake number five. This one will involve layers. So let's go ahead and jump into the layers panel and here click on the plus sign. We're gonna add one of the overlays here. So let's just click on it and add it to our image. As you can see, it appears on our layers panel. And now we can move into the main toolbar where we can increase its opacity and then change the blend mode from normal into the screen. So now we have this really lovely glow here coming from the side and this just adds and give us a little bit more depth and special look. And this is where the mistake comes. Most of the time, once you do this, you wanna continue with editing of the image. So you move into the main toolbar and let's say that you go into the color where you add some more saturation, then you go into the landscape and maybe you want to add some golden hour warmth. And then even further, you want to add a little bit of the vignette. So again, you go into the vignette tool and just add a little bit of the vignette to the image. Now, really, it's only at this point where you can notice that the vignette is not appearing. And the reason is that all the changes and edits we have just made, we made them to the new layer, which is on the top of our original image. So what you need to remember is that you always editing the layer that is selected and has the blue frame around it. So now when I select the original layer and go into the edits, you will see that it's empty. There is nothing there. Where if I select the new layer, and go into the edits, you will see that all the color, landscape, and vignette tools are here. So it's important to remember that when you have a different layer selected, all the edits you're going to make are going to be applied just to them. Now here comes a pro tip. If you wanna apply edit to all the layers at the same time, at this moment, what you need to do is to export the image in the highest possible quality, something like a 16-bit TIFF file, then bring it back into the Luminar Neo and continue from there. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.